Vindy 11 fans, another Tuesday night, another edition of 11 Live. I'm Ian Gilmore. Uh, thanks for joining the ride, as always. Uh, this is the second one of the season, as we are fully in regular season mode now. Uh, got a point on the road at Tampa Bay this past weekend, uh, and very much in part thanks to our guest today, Yannick Utul joins us. Yannick, it was a uh, it was a massive game for you in all sorts of facets, not only on the field, but back in the in the state where you went to college, had family and friends of the game. So I guess first, just being back, uh, playing where you played a ton of games in college, what was that like, uh, being back in Florida? Um, it was a good feeling. Um, you know, I have a bunch of family, friends down there. Um, they all came out to the game. So it actually felt somewhat like a home game um, just because, you know, having having them watch is, is a great support. It's, it's fun to be on, on the field knowing that you have people that care about you uh, deeply in the stands. Um, and I can't wait, honestly, for first home game, real home game uh, in Carroll. Who all was there watching you? Sorry? Who all was there watching you? Um, it was my fiance's family, um, teammates from UCF, former teammates from UCF, um, friends we met along the way. Um, it, it was really, really a great experience. Good. Well, you know, not only were the teammates, the former teammates in the stand, but uh, Cal Jennings was your teammate in college. And I didn't realize until this, until after the game, because you, uh, you told me you played with him, mm -hmm. but you didn't tell me that he was actually your roommate. <laughs> In college, so kind of tell me that story. What was it like living with him? How long did you live with him? What was that like? Um, when I joined my freshman year at UCF, I got put in a room, and Cal Jennings was one of my three other roommates. Um, he, uh, we lived together for two years. Yeah, we uh, have a lot of memories together. Uh, it was a cool apartment, cool vibe. Loved playing Catan together, yeah. Um, and yeah, we had a very successful two years together. Um, where in the second year he was, I think, the highest scoring striker or the highest scoring player nationally. Um, and it was it was a good experience with him. And we got along very well. And you can still see, like, you know, after the game, we hung out and uh, talked a little bit, talked his old club, talked his new club and everything. So it was good. So you went up against him in training all the time then, right? Uh yeah, every now and then it was. I think it was usually the other goalkeepers that he did PKs with, but definitely, I I definitely know his style of taking a PK. That's for sure. Well, okay, so walk me through this. When he's getting ready to take this, what's going through your mind? Well, you know, Cal has a very determined run up. So if he picks a corner, he's gonna go to that corner. He's not gonna do anything fancy. So you see, his run up is very determined. He's gonna strike the ball very hard. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a guessing game at that point. It doesn't really matter if he, he's comfortable going both sides. I, I know in college when we played together, he went left, he went right. And he scored, he scored, I think all of his penalties. I've never seen him miss one in person. So it was, uh, I, I didn't think I had very good odds because even if he places it in the corner with pace, uh, good strike. Then as a goalkeeper, you have to move very, very early and you give him basically the rest of the goal. So That's that's not a bad uh, – seeing him miss one for the first time and it's right down the pipe with your own eyes against him. So yeah. you said Swifty did some good scouting. What did you – did you guys scout like last year's pens? Is that what you were looking at? Um, I think it was last season and then – yeah, it was last season. It was uh, one penalty with LAFC in the cup games, I think, and then, and then with uh, Las Vegas Lights. It was like three penalties, um, nothing, nothing crazy. Just a general, general idea of what what I have to expect when he steps up. And I, I told Swifty, I think Swifty didn't know that I knew Cal Jennings like that. Okay. Um, but I, I said, yeah, it's I'm I'm aware. Um, definitely a help though, and uh, we got it done. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you think you know, and he knows that he could have put it farther in the corner, but still a great save to get your hand up there. What was um. What was the conversation after the game? Is that the first thing you two talked about, or did you just kind of just talk about the game as a whole? Um, kind of a little bit of everything, you know. It's um, of course, like for me, it's a good moment. For him, it's not so good of a moment. So, um, but that's soccer, right? Like sometimes you come up on the good end, sometimes not. Um, and he knows that. He knows that better than anyone else. And um, 
and I'm sure that he will it will be a, an issue for the league overall. Um, and I honestly can't wait to see him see him compete against the best strikers in the league, which I'm sure he will. Yeah, you'll, well, we'll get him again at home this year, so that'll be good. It's true. Um, true. And hey, that penalty save was, was kind of part of what got you on the team of the week this 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 week. So um, I know you've you've done it once before in Hartford, but kind of you know seeing yourself up there that's something you got to take pride in, right? Of course, um, definitely, definitely something, something great to start off the season with, uh, something to build on. Um, I hope it won't be my last one this season. So, uh, so I'll put in all the work to make that um, uh, an event that occurs as many times as possible this season. Yeah, hopefully uh, some uh, clean sheets in the future, right? Correct. Um, so I want to kind of you know, go away from the game now and talk about like the process – in the off season for you becoming an Indy 11 player, um, whether that kind of happened maybe through an agent or you had conversations with Mark and the coaching staff, how did you end up moving from Hartford to Indy a few months ago? Um, honestly, it was a very good phone call with Mark. Um, we had a really good conversation about what he's trying to do here, um, who he's trying to assemble here, uh, what he's looking for in his players. And that, all made sense to me you know it 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 sounded like he's building something he's done it before he's someone that i met swifty then later in december and it all made sense and it was it was a really really good overall feeling um and honestly i had a good season last year in hartford but i didn't have a full season right i joined them mid-season played their games but it didn't feel like i was i was a hundred percent there because I was still under contract with New England. And I just wanted to have a clean start in the league with a team that believes it can it can reach playoffs, can win championships, can create something, you know? And uh, Mark gave me that feeling from the beginning. And, um, and I do think that we have a very, very good squad that can definitely compete anything it sets its mind to. Whether it was in that conversation or in conversations you've had since, Mark is, I'd say, a very demanding manager. What has he demanded from you so far? Well, um, he demands that I'm, that I'm brave back there. Um, I think his expectations towards his goalkeepers are that, that they're aggressive, that they're not afraid of playing with, playing with their back line, that they're uh, good at managing the game, all these things, communicating, um, and I think that I do. I do bring some some of my qualities. That I like to think are playing with my feet and being aggressive, uh, playing a high line, um, those things. And I hope that I can I can uh, realize my full potential here because that is what Mark's expectations are for being a goalkeeper at any. Yeah, I think people even just through the first game can kind of see uh, how good you are with your feet. Is that something that's always been around for you, or have you had to really work at that? Um, back when I, in, in my youth years, uh, I was always one of the smaller goalkeepers. So I always had to do more. I had to, I had to jump higher. I had to kick better. I had to play better with my back line. So it was kind of something that I had to, had to improve more than other goalkeepers that could rely on, uh, making great saves in the, in the upper nineties and stuff because I couldn't reach that. Um, but then through the years, it actually paid off that I did the extra work in those those areas because uh, I think the game of a goalkeeper is shifting towards uh, a more playing goalkeeper um, that can start start attacks, um, be the base of where you where you want to want to start your tactical advance up the field. So when did the growth spurt happen for you then? Um, around seventeen, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. I can relate because I mean, in high school, I played keeper for one year on varsity, and I was I was five six five seven man. I couldn't do the jumping and stuff like that though, which is why I'm here. And you know, you're playing now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel you. Are there are there any keepers that you kind of modeled your game after as you were coming up? Who was like the the role models for you? Uh, big inspiration uh, was Mark Andretisting, and I think he. Uh, oh, before that, I have to I have to I have to mention Manuel Neuer, just because he changed. The game of goalkeeper completely um and then down the road someone i could get like closer assimilate myself to was mark andrew chestigan um he i think technically is one if not the best goalkeeper out there 
um, whether he's the best goalkeeper of the world every year in a row or not, out of question. Like, there's other really, really good goalkeepers, but I think from a technical perspective and who I'm on tomorrow, is, it's him. Um, Did you ever cross paths with him in your younger days when you were in Germany? No, no, unfortunately not. He's a... Uh, He's he's a couple of years older than me, and um, and we never we never really met uh, through the youth academy or anything. So, and then when I when I started playing uh, in the professional uh, professional leagues in Germany, he was already at Barcelona. So, okay, yeah, he he, uh, he had the skyrocket going on. <laughs> yeah, he he is one of a kind. That's for sure. Right. Um, one thing I think it's really unique um, is is kind of your and Eunice's relationship because. Coming from uh, you know another team, obviously it's an Eastern Conference, so you're familiar playing against some of these guys before. But uh, you came here, kind of not necessarily with, but at the same time as a as a teammate you had in Hartford. So what is uh, what was your and Eunice's relationship like before you even got here, and how cool has it been kind of experiencing uh, this new new path with him? Uh, Eunice and I uh, got got along really well uh, fairly quickly, and in, in Hartford we. Are coming from the same background right so um we went to college and then now we're finding our way in in pro soccer he of course has a little more experience than i do um but it was it was we we got along fairly quickly and um from there on throughout throughout the season um i noticed that he just has warrior warrior mentality you know like he he does his work off the field he just has a very good mentality towards how a team should look like, and um, honestly, when I was on the phone call with Mark, and um, and I heard that Eunice had raised some interest from Mark too, uh, I figured, okay, he has a way of finding out who is a good character on the field and off the field, and who puts in the work, who does not. So, it's it was really good. And then, honestly, that it worked out that we both get to Indy was was really really good because. Yeah, we can we can continue hanging out and uh, doing our stuff together. What was that first conversation between the two of you when you both found out you both had the same plans? Um, we we were we were pretty happy. Like it was, it was, I think it's a good step for both of us. Um, and uh, and he he was just excited to get here and get started, and me the same. And it's it's always a little you know intimidating going into a club and and, and environment that you don't know. And having someone that does the same step with you already gives you a way better feeling. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see you on the pitch again with him in a, in a, in a week week or two. Uh, no game this weekend, obviously, but back in Detroit on the 25th. Uh, yeah. And then after that is home opener. I guess, what are you looking forward to the most on April 1st? I, I'm, I'm excited to see the fans for the first time. Um, I've never been in Indy playing. Uh and uh, I saw the videos of of the watch party. Uh, Brick Air Battalion are doing are doing a lot of great work. So I'm really happy to see the fans out there and uh, interact with them and and just get my first home game in. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, fans, remember you can buy your tickets right now. You don't have to wait until April first. So go to indie11.com slash tickets to get those in. You'll be able to see all the boys in blue, including Yannick, uh, when we take on the Las Vegas Lights. So. All right, Yannick, it's been a pleasure, man. It's uh, great to chat with you, and thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, and uh, see you tomorrow. And let's see the fans in about two weeks. Yeah, sounds good. All right, we'll see you back here uh, next week, fans, 11 Live, Tuesday nights. See you. All ya. the best. See ya.